Today on CCX News, historic flooding. The town of Waterville, Minnesota begins cleanup after heavy rains. How local fire officials are helping. Brooklyn Center's fire chief and another important member of the fire department went south to Waterville to lend a hand. In the fire service, we're here to help. And, and, and that's really the main point. We're here to help our community. We're here to help others. And we're here to help each other. And sometimes fire departments need help too. Brooklyn Center Fire Chief Todd Berg says Waterville's firefighters have been working around the clock to combat the rising floodwaters. He was one of several firefighters from around the state that helped out at Waterville's fire station, giving its local firefighters a 48-hour break. A second member of the fire department, Therapy Dog Brooklyn, also went to Waterville. She brought a calming presence to the worn-out firefighters. She was met by all the other firefighters, people that walked by the fire station. She changes the, the, the spirit of the room when she walks into a room, for sure. Berg says there were no major medical or fire incidents while he was there. After a rainy June, tree services are busy. I spoke with a company who's booked out with jobs and a neighbor who's waiting for help. Tree trimming is light work for Maple Grove's Yes Trees. Today we're doing preventative maintenance. We are going through and, and thinning out the center of most of these trees. This is one of many tasks they have set up this week. Thanks to weather conditions over the past few years. You're getting an extreme opposite, right? We get the drought for two years, which is not good for trees, the root system, um, the structure of the trees, and then we're getting this onslaught of rain that just keeps on coming. Owner Lance Gardner says it's booked out for all kinds of services, from trimming to tree removal. We are busy. Um, it's pretty typical for a professional tree service to be booked out about a month. Don't have any fence left. All the way through here. In Brooklyn Park, Barb Scholl is struggling against that backlog. I was doing dishes and I looked out the window and wondered where the tree went. She's lost five trees in the last two years. Symptoms of the strange climate. There's dead trees up and down the street. It's been hard for her to find someone to help. Pretty much every yard has dead trees, three or four, not just one. As Scholl waits, tree services continue to work. Gardner says for future cases, the best way to keep your trees from falling is to keep up with them. Even a little bit of wind with excess moisture and weight on a tree can cause problems for ones that have not been dealt with prior to with that preventative maintenance. He suggests getting them trimmed every three to five years. This is the perfect time to get them growing properly in the right way. For Gardner, growing trees in the right direction is the biggest priority. We need beautiful trees and, and good oxygen to breathe so that we can enjoy the days when we wake up. In other news, the Plymouth Planning Commission is expected to take up plans later this month for two new apartment buildings. Doran Companies is proposing two six-story buildings with more than 350 units at the northwest corner of Fernbrook and Harbor Lanes. The project would replace four office buildings that are considered functionally obsolete. It would offer new housing options in Plymouth. However, the project comes with concerns. A neighboring office complex believes the size of the project would dwarf everything around it, casting a permanent shadow on their property. The developer is contemplating adjustments to the proposal, which is expected to be revisited at the July 17th Plymouth Planning Commission meeting. Meanwhile, the city of Plymouth is fully charged up. As Ellie Tolke explains, the city's network of electric vehicle charging stations is a full go. The plan of putting electric vehicle charging stations here in Plymouth has been charging for three years now. Well, the time has finally come. You can find these stations at 12 different locations here in Plymouth. After delays caused by shortages on supplies, 115 charging stalls are now fully functional and finally ready to use in Plymouth for all electric vehicle car users. And by partnering with XL Energy and Carbon Solutions, they come at no cost to the taxpayers. There is a fee for users to use them. Um, however, there is not any, there was no operational or capital cost to get them installed. Hansen says the staff in Plymouth have always worked toward environmental stewardship efforts and are hoping others will too. We're hoping that people will follow suit and continue to increase their EV chargings in other municipalities to allow for the change of 
the environment as EV users become more frequent. So far, she says the feedback has been very positive. As we've been coming online, users have been having a good experience uh, on all of them. The city hopes more visitors will want to come and check out what they have to offer. We would like to think so that people will want to come because of all of the services that we provide. That is part of our city of choice efforts. All you have to do is download the Dirt Road app, select your location, find the name of the charging station, and plug it in to the pump of your vehicle. At the end, you will just hit stop charge, and you put the cord right back up, and you are electrified and on your way. In Plymouth, Ellie Tolke, CCX News. For an interactive map of the different locations, you can visit our website at ccxmedia.org. A Plymouth movie theater is preparing for an influx of customers this weekend after the temporary closure of a nearby cinema. Imagine Willow Creek in Plymouth says it's all hands on deck for the 4th of July weekend. The big movie premiering over the holiday is Despicable Me 4. On top of that, the nearby Showplace Icon Theater in St. Louis Park is temporarily closing as it undergoes an ownership change. Yeah, we're really excited for the opportunity to show people what Imagine's about. I think. We get lost sometimes with the big dogs, the AMCs and the Regals, and for us to be able to show people what we do at Willow Creek, um, we really care about movies and we care about the experience, um, and of course, hospitality. The St. Louis Park Theater will reopen on Monday, July 8th as the Marcus West End Cinema.